welcome to Urantia Foundation's third science symposium. I'm Tamara Strumpelt, and it's wonderful to be here with all of you. To start, I'd like to acknowledge with respect, love, and worshipful adoration, the scientist of scientists, the mathematician of mathematicians, the philosopher of philosophers, the one and only uncaused cause, he in whom we all live, move, and have our being, the eternal, infinite, true, good, and beautiful personality, the very friend who lives within our own heart, the universal father. Imagine that, the very friend who is first a creator, then the controller, and lastly, the infinite upholder of all creation. He who rules a universe of universes by the compelling power of his love. Thank you, Father, for all that you do and for all that you are. Thank you for already bridging the almost infinite gulf between us with the gifts of divine indwelling spirits. Thank you for the sevenfold approach to you that begins with our beloved creator son, now master sovereign of our universe. Thank you for having us in your beautiful cosmic family. And thank you for the gift of revelation and to all who serviced to bring us the Urantia. I'd like to share what I find to be the most stirring line in the whole book. Yes, I was able to narrow it down to one line. No matter how much of God you may attain, there will always remain much more of him, the existence of which you will not even suspect. Truly, the quest for God is endless. There will always be mystery. There will always be discovery. Life will never stay. And someday, maybe, in my future Ascension career, perhaps I'll be the one able to offer deep scientific insights, maybe even join a celestial astronomer corps. But until then, with gratitude and appreciation, we have some great thinking scientific minds in our community, and luckily nine have volunteered their time and brain talent to present some fascinating topics during this symposium. A big thank you to all of you. I'm excited for your presentation. As I mentioned before, this is the foundation's third in a series. Ralph Sayre, it was your fabulous idea that brought these symposiums to life. Thank you. And for this event, Marjorie Ray, thank you for taking the lead. Your contributions are significant and valued. We also had a volunteer selection committee, Virginia Heller, Jeff Taylor, Brad Garner, Joanne Strobel, and Marjorie Ray. Your time spent poring over submissions and your recommendations are appreciated. Gary Tong, your graphics and visual effects are awesome. And Gary Dinestead, a shout out to you for composing the music. Brad Garner, who is our digital programs manager, thank you for figuring out all the technical aspects of this new platform, for training all of us on how to use it and for all of your behind the scenes skills. And Joanne Strobel, you did it again. Your organization, attention to detail, and ability to make everything appear seamless never ceases to amaze me. Thank you. And now I come to Gard Jameson. Gard has been a trustee of the Ranch Foundation for more than 20 years. He is our treasurer and devoted chair of the Education Committee. Thank you for valuing these symposiums and bringing us all together to learn about science, the interface between evolution and revelation. Everyone, allow me to introduce Gord. Wow, Tamara, that was beautiful. Oh, thank, thank you. So much. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you, you are so, such a magnificent soul. And the way you introduced and thanked everybody, all I can say is ditto, ditto, ditto. And I'm looking behind you and I'm seeing a beautiful painting that was done uh, that Mo Siegel requested, commissioned. And it's actually, if everybody can see it, Jesus sharing the science of boat building. <laughs> and so how appropriate that we should be seeing this beautiful painting, which, by the way, for those of you that don't know, there is a boat museum on the shores of Galilee, which we think maybe one of Jesus's boats was dredged up from the lake and sits in that museum because it's 
according to the people that have looked at it, an incredible piece of ingenuity in boat building. So uh, we enter the gates with thanksgiving and we enter the courts with praise. And we are, as, as Tamara said, so thankful for so many people. And I'm just grateful to our angels, to the unseen friends who are part of our lives, who we don't even suspect are part of our lives, who are helping us to walk this walk on this distressed and troubled planet. And as we think about science, we're living in a difficult time. It was about 100 years ago that many people started to discard philosophy and religion as institutions and as disciplines, suggesting that religion was a poison or an opium or an illusion. And the philosophy was just a bunch of words. And we're living now in a moment in this postmodern world. We're living now in a moment where people are beginning to throw science out the window. Imagine that. They're beginning to question the validity of science. They're beginning to question whether or not there are facts. So we're living in a very uh, precarious moment. And we know the angels of the churches and the angels of progress and all of the angels who are here on the planet, all the midwares, all the beings who are here supporting this plan of divine progression um, are sort of rooting you and the team on to move us closer to that epic of light and life. And so we get to be the pioneers. My family came across the plains five generations ago and started a township in California. We get to come across the plains in these covered wagons of ours in this difficult moment of pandemic and difficulty. And we get to come across the plains and share some of the insights that we're learning. And just as Alfred Wegener discovered the continental drift in 1912 or thought of it, and began to imagine it, so we are making connections now between evolutionary science and the revelation. And there will be people who will follow us, who will see these trails, these, these indications that we are creating through this science symposium. And we'll go, oh my goodness, there is a connection between the automaton and the atom and reality matter. And people like Nigel Nunn and George Park and so many of our presenters are giving us these hints, these clues as to the way forward. So I hope you will join us in this uh, wonderful scientific trek through a number of disciplines as we explore what the revelation has to say and how we may, might begin to connect to evolutionary thought. And I wanna do a deep bow. I just came back from a Buddhist retreat and it was a wonderful experience and in Buddhism. It's a deep bow, a deep bow to my sister Marjorie, who uh, has sort of been the captain at the helm here. And uh, Joanne has been a midshipman and she has, as my father used to say, cheery aye aye, has really been extraordinary in shepherding all of us and getting us through this process. And to all of my co-presenters, uh, just a deep bow to you and appreciation for the work that you've done. And I think Marjorie is gonna share some of the ways in which you can interact with us and, and we will move this ship out of the harbor. So Marjorie, deep bow. Deep bow, thank you. Guard, I really appreciate uh, both you and Tamara and your thoughts that you've shared with us this morning. Uh, I too owe a great uh, gratitude to Joanne and Brad for pulling all this together. As I said to our presenters yesterday, we're all here in service to our brothers and sisters, and of course, to the will of our universal father. Uh, we hope that you find the symposium insightful and very thought provoking. Our presenters and panelists have invested much time and energy into this effort. And to them, I wish to express my gratitude. I'm anxious to hear George's talk. It's gonna be fantastic as are the ones that will follow. So we are going to tie up this uh, session, this introductory session, and we'll see each other on the other side shortly. Thank you.